Amen. What a privileged day and time that we're living in, that you're living in. And I want to share with you in this particular teaching how to activate God's divine transfer of wealth for you personally, right here in the Word of God. Thank you for tuning in. Well, I could spend a lot of time, but I'm going to highlight some things. First of all, as I see the Word of God, I see that there is going to be a transfer of wealth for God's people like this world has never seen. A great transfer of wealth. And I see some major ways that it's going to take place. One of the ways is in Isaiah chapter 45, and I think it's right around verse 11, where that God says that I will show you where the hidden treasures are and where uh, riches in secret places are. Don't you know God knows where all the riches that are hidden in this world, where they're at? He knows. And, and he's telling us we just need to get closer to God so we can hear his voice. And so God knows these things. How many remembers it was on the worldwide news not too long ago, not too many months ago, where the, there was a ship that had been in the water for what, since World War II, I think it was? And how many millions, if not billions of dollars of, what was it, um, was it gold bars that was uh, in the ship? Um, and it was there, you know, it was just multi-millions of dollars worth of uh, precious stone, whatever. I, I can't remember if it, was, if it was gold or what it was. But um, one person found out about it, and uh, they went down there, and they received that. Well, God knew it was there all the time. Now, if we could just turn back time, just maybe two years, then you would know where it's at, Right? Well, the Bible says that God knows the end from the very beginning. And so there's a lot of hidden wealth in this world, and God knows right where it's at, and God's telling his people today. So expect that. And then in Proverbs, in chapter 8 and verse 12, the Bible says that God will give us uh, witty inventions. And I, I had two people. They didn't know what I was going to speak on this morning. And uh, they come up and told me, they said, this week, God gave them some witty inventions, and it, it sounds real good that uh, just from these inventions, I, I can see they can become multimillionaires. Just really neat inventions. Well, God can tell you, and um, there's all sorts of things that God knows about, and we just need to listen to him, and so he'll tell us those things. But I want to I look at another major, and this may be the major way. If it's not the major way, it, it's... It's in the top two or three reasons are ways, I'll say it that way, ways that there is going to be a transfer of wealth. Uh, turn your Bibles to the book of Joel in chapter 2, and you see the transfer of wealth real plain in Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, um, verse 19. It says, Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. The word wine in the Hebrew, this is exactly what it says, fresh grape juice. That's exactly what it says. And so as you're looking at this, in that day and time, and this was written almost 3,000 years ago, probably right around 25, 2,700 years from today, backwards. And, and in those days, they didn't use currency the way that we did. And so these things were likened unto great wealth. And so you see that same description all through Joel chapter 2, in reference to great wealth, there were things that they used. And so in verse 22, it says, Be not afraid. No, we, we missed 21. Let me back up here. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Now, this word rejoice uh, 
in the Hebrew, it's mentioned something like 45 times in the Old Testament. And the full meaning of this word rejoice is to spin, to dance and to spin, just to spin around, you know. And uh, if you get real happy, that uh, you'll probably want to spin. And, um, and there's power in dancing before the Lord. And then it goes on to say in verse 22, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do, spr do spring. For their tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Again, we're seeing things how that people in those days received wealth. Verse 23, be glad then, ye children of Zion. And as you study the Bible, that today we are the children of Zion. We are the Jews today. In fact, we're the highest order of Jews because we're the ones that believe the word of God. The Jews, they rejected Jesus. We haven't rejected Jesus. But in Galatians in chapter 3, verse 28, the Bible says that if ye be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs of Abraham. So we're the highest order of Jews today. We be Jews. Amen. So we've got, you know, we're, 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 the, we're the true Jews today, and I'm not taking away how that God can't use the children of Israel any more than he can use anything else, but his highest order of anointing is on us that have accepted Jesus as Lord. Well, let's go on here. Uh, verse 23. Be glad, then ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Now that word month, if you've got a King James Bible, in most Bibles, it'll be italicized. And when you see italicized words in your Bibles, that's because it wasn't in the original at all. And sometimes there are other words that are not italicized in the same thing, that scholars put those words in there, hoping to give us better understanding. However, that the word month is not there in the meaning whatsoever, and the word first in the Hebrew, it says in the beginning. And so at, in the very beginning, of some great things of God, there is going to be this great outpouring of the latter rains and the former rains. And now, as you look at what we've already been reading, it's talking about financial blessings, riches. And so, riches in reference to reigning. Now, as you study the Bible, that the former rains and the latter rains are like unto... Uh, the spring rains, and the fall rains. Now, if the very beginning of what God is going to do, and if it was literally all our fall rains and all our latter rains, and if it was at the very beginning, or even if it was one month, it doesn't say one month, but if it was at the very beginning, what would take place on planet Earth? We would have a tsunami on a worldwide basis the whole world would be covered with a flood, right? Not one square inch of planet Earth would be exempt from being absolutely saturated with water. It would be a, a great flood, a flood like this world has never, ever seen. All the rains that have ever existed from the beginning of time to our present time, all the, the spring rains and all the fall rains, if they happened all at one time, It'd be powerful. And so he's showing us this is in reference to God's financial blessings reigning upon God's people. Folks, a tsunami is coming for God's people. For God's people. And if I study the Bible, I see that right after the rapture takes place, that there's going to be great prosperity on the world like the world has never seen. And it's because we're leaving our money because we don't need it. We're going someplace much better. And people that miss the rapture are crazy. 
I mean, you're going to voluntarily stay when you could go to heaven and you're going to go through the tribulation period? Well, the first three and a half years isn't too bad. And it'll only be bad for the people that don't take the mark of the beast or his name or his number that doesn't associate with the one world government, the one world religion. It's going to be bad for those people. But everybody else, there's going to be great financial prosperity. And, and to show you how crazy they are, it takes them three and a half years. And in the first three and a half years, they have great wealth. And then the world has bankruptcy so great, this world has never seen bankruptcy like this that will take place on the face of the earth. So, but we're going to have great wealth before then. And they can have it when we're gone. You know. It was just like my nephew one time that, uh, you know, I went fishing with him, and uh, we're out in the boat, and, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and he wasn't a Christian. I, I, I hope he is now. But uh, we were fishing, and he says, you know, Mel, I, says, I really like your house. So this was, a, oh, I don't know, maybe about 25 years ago. It was a house that Don and I had built, and we don't live in that house anymore, but, it, you know, we built it. It, 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 was, it was okay. It was a nice house. And he said, I really like your house. And I said, well, you can have it. He, what do you mean you can have it? Yeah, one day after the rapture, you can have it. <laughs> and he looked at me. He said, what are you trying to say? I said, you know. <laughs> so anyway, they can have our stuff. We've got, we're going to a better place. Look at this in verse uh, 24. And the floors shall be full of wheat and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil and i will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which i sent among you and you verse 26 and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and you shall know, not think so, not hope so, you're going to know that I'm in the midst of Israel. I'm in the midst of my people. And I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. I'm telling you, a great outpouring of finances like this world has never seen coming to God's people. I'm talking multi-trillions of dollars coming into the body of Christ. It's not going to happen for everybody, but for those that knows the word of God and believe. It's just like healing today. You know that uh, somebody told me that there was a, a, a couple that left last night, and some, one of the ushers asked them, they said, why, why are you leaving? Is, you know, is everything okay? Well, we just don't believe in healing. Well, you ain't going to get healed then. That's, you know, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing, and that by hearing the word of God. And so... There was a time I didn't believe in healing and, and I didn't get healed. But, I, but you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. There was a time I didn't believe in, in having divine prosperity. And so I was poor. And there was a time that I didn't believe in divine protection. But I found out the word of God. And now I believe in divine protection. And on and on and on. And so you're going to get what you believe in. You know, and there's a lot of teaching going on today and it's unscriptural. It is scriptural, somewhat, that we're going to go through the tribulation period. And, and there are people going through the tribulation period. But I'm not going. And there's a, there's a people that are not going through the tribulation period. It's called the glorious church. But those that are not the glorious church, they're going to go through the tribulation period. And they'll be Christians that will go through it. And like Brother Hilton Sutton, Hilton Sutton would always say, he says, yes, there is. There is a, a rapture that will take place before the tribulation period and one right in the middle of the tribulation period and he says it's like everything else if that's what you're believing for that's what you'll get well i'm taking the first train out <laughs> amen how many wants to go with me amen heaven's better than this amen well let's go on and notice this in verse 28 it says and it shall come to pass afterward I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and have dreams and 
your old men shall have dreams and your young men shall have visions. And then in verse 30, it says, and I will show wonders. And so as you study the word wonders in the Greek, now I know this is Hebrew, but when you take that same passage in the Greek, it says supernatural miracles in the imagination realm, confirming the atoning work of Christ, proving that Jesus is Lord. That can't happen until the flood. I'm pushing, I'm, I'm pushing the envelope. I've already started in signs and wonders, but I can't fully get into that office until the financial prosperity comes into operation. And that's the reason I'm teaching you this, because I want to get in my office. And I can't fully get into it until this great flood, this tsunami of finances comes on the body of Christ. Amen. Now, I want to show you how that this took place in the Old Testament. Turn your Bibles, the book of Exodus. And as you study um, the children of Israel, they were in bondage with Egypt. They were their slaves. And so we see that God brought the children of Israel, brought them out of bondage into the promised land. And as we study the Bible, we see this is like unto the rapture. We're going, we're, we're going to be brought out and we're going into the promised land. And you'll notice in Psalm 105 spells it out real plain, but let's look here right in Exodus because it, it's, it's very detailed. God's getting ready to bring his children out. And Exodus in chapter 11 and verse 2. And here's, now if you'll notice in verse 1, it says, and the Lord said. And so God is saying, he's, he's speaking to, to Moses and telling him what to do, giving him some instructions on bringing the people out. And he says in verse 2, speak now in the ears of the people and let every man or woman borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. Now, Keep this word borrow in mind that the fuller meaning in the Hebrew for this word borrow is to request, to demand, to ask for, desire, or require. But now as I study the word of God that I find that God's people that we are, we are like our father. We have the same uh, demeanor, the same character as our father. Our father's not rude. He's not arrogant. He's not unkind. He's not lustful. And so in like manner, God's people weren't going and lusting after other people's things. They weren't rude like, I want that. You give that to me. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that sort of a thing. In essence, what they did let's look at these words they went to the, the to the egyptians that had all the gold and all the silver and as you go on further they even asked for their raiment and then it goes on and, and and so let's look at these words they ask they desired they required so they they looked at their gold and their silver and they said you know i really like that i admire that i really like that I'd really like to have that. I'd, I'd really like to have that. that that's something that I, I really desire. I really like that. But inside, they, they might not even have said, I'd like to have that. I'm sure they were really kind and had an anointing on their vocabulary that wasn't offensive whatsoever. God's people are not offensive. So I'm sure that maybe I need to reword that. I'm sure they, they just said, you know, I really like that. But on the inside, they're saying, in Jesus' name. Well, they might not have said Jesus back then. But, you know, in the name of Jehovah, I claim that. That's mine, in the name of Jehovah. I'm a child of the living God. And keep that in mind. So that's what they were doing. They went and they, that, that's the kind of asking they were doing. They were just saying, you know, that, that's really, that really looks nice. I'd like to have something like that. Let them know that they desired it. They went to them 
and desired it. Now let's look on in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 35. Now see, God told Moses to tell the children of Israel and let's pick up what and see what took place in verse 35. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed <coughs> of the Egyptians. The same word borrowed is exactly the same Hebrew word. They desired. <coughs> they requested. They demanded. And then it says they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. And the Lord, verse 36, look at this. This is really good. Hang on with me. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as do they required. See, it was a requirement. They're saying, this is a requirement. I need this for God's glory. And it says, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Now, let's look at this. Let's examine this a little bit closer. This word lent, so that it is the, exactly the same Hebrew word as borrowed, both in chapter 11, verse 2, and exactly the same Hebrew word in chapter 12 and verse 35, where that they went and they borrowed the same word now it's the same word borrowed hebrew word lent so in essence that god's influence on the egyptians was that they were desiring to give it to them as much as the people were desiring to receive It was a requirement for them to give it inside of them. It's just like, I've been looking for you. What took you so long? I want you to have this. They desired it, they required it, and they demanded. I just demand that you take this. No, 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 you take it now. You've got to have it. It's a demand, a requirement within them to give it to them. But guess what happened? It was because that the Israelites asked. They had to take the first step. The devil tries to intimidate us and say all sorts of things. But we need to pray for boldness that we will be bold to speak with loving kindness. Be bold enough. And when you take the first, if they wouldn't have went and asked, the people wouldn't have given it to them. You see what I'm saying? Now there's, there, there's something I want to say. That you can say, well, this took place with the children of Israel. I want to I show you a twofold truth here. Number one, Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. If the rapture doesn't take place, if this outpouring of the, of, of the abundance of finances doesn't take place for another 20 years, this will work for you now. Because Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, the Bible says that John the Baptist was greater than all of those of the Old Testament, but you that are least in the, this dispensation, this kingdom, is greater than even John the Baptist. That tells me plainly, and as I study the Bible, I see that whatever God did for people in the Old Testament, he's going to do for you and more. And if that's not true, then Jesus came, lived, and died on the cross in vain, and we don't need the New Testament, just take it and throw it away. But Jesus came, he died, and the reason he did is so that we could have a new covenant established upon better promises. And so if, if God doesn't do for us what he did for the people in the Old Testament, what he did for the children of Israel, then we don't have a new covenant. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that to be arrogant or rude towards God. I'm doing that to jar you unto good works. So that we can wake up. So now you can know how to exercise your faith. Maybe you didn't know this before. But now you know it. And so you can use it. And I'm going to tell you what. That Don and I. That's the way we've been living. Ever since we've been married. 
And we didn't learn this until probably maybe about 25 years ago, 30 years ago, something like that. But that, that's, that's what we do, you know, that the world, if they're not saved, they got our stuff. Now, you know, they, if, if they get saved, then they can keep their stuff. But even if they get saved, if they're a multi-trillionaire, they need to give, they need to give that to the body of Christ. I mean, you, don't, you can't spend that all your life. And so, that, I mean, I can just tell you story after story after story. And I just put my best suit on. That's what the Lord told me to, to do. He says, you know, dress for success. I know that, isn't, that doesn't go over real good today because, you know, the, there's this one particular pastor and he wrote this book, user-friendly, you know, to do all these things to get people to come to church. And now he's the, the same. And, and, and so churches all over the world, pastors are coming to church Dressing like they're going to go feed hogs. That's the way I dress when I go feed hogs. I think that's disrespectful to the body of Christ. You know, that, that's disrespectful. I come up here with blue jeans and a T-shirt on and preach. If, if I went to a lawyer and he was dressed that way and he's taking care of some of my natural affairs, I'd be real kind because I'm a kind person, but he's not taking care of my natural business and I'm giving you some eternal wisdom. And so I need, to, I need to dress like I am addressing kings and queens because you're children of God. The Bible says that he is the king of kings and lord of lords. Who's he the king of? You. So I think that's just disrespectful. I don't buy that. Anyway, we have a new covenant established upon better promises. So the Lord, he told me that years ago. He says, when you, when you need something, dress successful and i i can just i i can tell you stories longer than you can set how that i've gone before people that were people in high positions and i just sat down in front of them and i said this is what i want i said i i, I re see i'm desiring this i'm real kind i said you know i want this i want this i want these i want this t these tv spots in the secular world i did that with the secular world i said i'd like to have these tv spots and he's, boy, I mean, he pulls out his contract. Well, we're glad to have you here, Pastor Vaughn. And I can remember when we first started doing that, it was 1982. And putting TV spots on in uh, the, the major networks in St. Louis. And, and he says, That's, man, we're happy to have you, Pastor Vaughn. And he says, I says, and, and so I said, well, fill that contract out. And he says, yeah, that's. $300 for 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds you're on, $300. Well, that was about $450 more than what I had. You know, you had to do that. And, and then he says, it's going to cost you $600. We have the own equipment, $600 just to make the commercials. And so, man, I just, if you want to be used of God, you're going to have to die to your pride. Die so Jesus can live. And so what I did, I just, Grabbed that contract. I crossed out his $300. I put $25, signed the contract, turned it back to him, and the man did just what you're doing. He <laughs> laughed. He just laughed at me. But it wasn't long. Two weeks later, you know, and I just told him. I mean, we, we had a little bit of a discussion there. You could imagine. And he just says, you know, he says, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. I get fired. I said, you've got a contract. That's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give you $25 a week. I'm going to give you $25 a week. And so he just, and it was very intimidating. His office was a quarter of the size of this auditorium. He had a shark skin suit on. I mean, the man is looking sharp. You can tell he's a prominent figure for that organization. But I'm not intimidated by human beings. I have the favor of God on me. I'm a child of God. And you are too. Luke in chapter 21, verse 15. You need to know this. You need to know this. Jesus said, I'll give you a mouth and wisdom that those that are opposed you will not be able to gainsay nor resist you. Two weeks later, he called up and just apologized all over the place. Says, we, we're going to give that to you. $25. You have not because you ask not. Amen. And I can just go on and on and on. 
buy cars the same way, buy houses and lands the same way. That's the reason why you're sitting in this property. When we had just a healthy Sunday morning, 30 or 35, two months overdue in bills, we went out to buy this ground and start building this building. We ain't got no money. You don't need money. All you need is God's favor. They'll not be able to gainsay nor resist because you've got God's faith. Now stop and think about it. If God appeared to you right now and all his, if Jesus just walked up to you right now and he just walks up to you and he says, what, what's your name, sir? I remember you told me Raymond's come. And he says, Raymond, he says, if Jesus walked up to you right now, and I know you told me you've been reading your Bible ever since you were 17 and you're probably a little older than that now. 80, 83. Well, you're just getting started. Moses didn't get started until he is 80. So, but if Jesus right now, now I've, you know, you're a Christian, you're going to tell me the truth. If he appeared to you right now and you just bought a brand new car and you just really like it and he just looked at you and he says, Raymond, I really like that car. You, you couldn't wait to give it to him. Isn't that right? If Jesus appeared to any of you, no matter what you've got, if he says, I really like your house. I really like it. Here, you can have it. Given to God? Man, the Bible says when you give to God that he causes a hundredfold return to come back to you as much as that. Man, I mean, I'm looking for somebody that I can invest in like that. And that's investing in God's. And so, see, that, that anointing of favor is on you if you will activate it. It doesn't hurt you. Yeah, I really like that. I'd, write, I'd like to have that. That's why I told that man. That's why I tell the, the people with so many different things. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Then I want to show you that, um, well, you see that God did this for the children of Israel. And God will do it for us. The tra that, that's, how, that, that's how they had the transfer of wealth. And it, here the Bible says that the children of Israel, they spoiled the Egyptians. In the, the, in the Hebrew, it says they stripped them of everything they had, took it all. I'm, that's Old Testament. I'm, I'm going to be so bold to, just to tell the truth. We have a new covenant established upon better promises I think that all the wealth is coming to the body of Christ. All of it. If you're people that aren't saved, they ain't got no sense. That's crazy. Go to hell when you don't, and, and, and you've already got a free ticket to go to heaven? That, that tells me they don't even know how to balance their checkbook. So they just need to give it to us so that we can use it for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. We don't need it to live a lavish lifestyle. We need it to propagate the gospel throughout the world amen and you'll be blessed in the meantime that you need to be blessed that uh, we are the greatest advertisement for god on the face of the earth christians are now if you go out in the world today and you go and, and talk to people that aren't Christians. And here you are, sick, miserably sick, horribly depressed, and wearing rags. And go to them and say, would you like to live like me? Just come to my church. And I'll teach you how to live like me. The race is on. They're leaving. I'll never forget Dr. Fred Price. I was at a minister's meeting one time. And years ago, when he just pastored a little church, about 100 people. And he was in, I think it was in Los Angeles. Is that where his church is at? And he says he was on a street corner. And there was a lady in his church and their little son. And he was on the street corner not too far from Fred. And Fred heard that little boy talking. And he seen this guy 
drive one of the state-of-the-art car, cars like a Rolls-Royce or something. The man had a, a, a sharp suit, one of the best suits that you can buy, and he's sitting in there, and he pulled up to the stop sign, and the little boy tugged on his mama's coat and said, Mama, 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 when I grow up, I want to be just like him. In essence, so I can dress like him, have prosperity like him, be successful like him. Mama, Mama, what do I have to do to be like him? Mama wouldn't answer. And Fred Price said he put his head down in shame, and he said, things has got to change. That man was a pimp working for the devil. And he says, I work for the king of kings and lord of lords. And now Fred Price, he drives Rolls Royces. And so little kids, Mama, Mama, what do I have to do to live like Fred Price? Come and follow me to my father's house. And he'll teach you to be a child of God, to be a king of kings. Amen. God's a good God. Some people, they say, well, I don't believe in prosperity. Well, you probably won't go to heaven then because there's streets of gold. And I know they sing songs about if they can just have a little cabin in the corner of glory land, but there's no cab cabins up there. I've never read about it. Only mansions. Mansions. Amen. God wants us to be blessed. We are an advertisement, the greatest advertisement for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're walking billboards. People don't read their Bibles. They look at us and they read us. Amen. Start believing God. You have not because you ask. You don't have, again, I'm not saying go out in arrogance, but just start looking at some stuff. Say, yeah. Well, that's really nice. I'd like to have that. What's wrong with that? I, that that's, that's really a nice house. That's really nice. I'd like to have that. Now, don't rob from your Christian brothers and sisters. It's the world. The world. And God will give you favor that they'll not be able to gainsay nor resist. Start practicing, you know, you ever ride a bicycle? Anybody here ever ride a bike? Do you remember that far back? First time you got on, you didn't do too good. Practice makes perfect. The first time I prayed for people to be healed in healing services, oh, I was hoping there wasn't any difficult cases. It's just like, I can I remember, and, and I've told this story, but some of you haven't. It, it'd be good. It's just like coconut cream pie. Just because you ate one piece, that doesn't mean you never get any more. You know, you want some more, right? When I went down to Mexico, the first, man, I was so excited. This after Jesus appeared to me, and I thought, man, I'm going to go practice in third world countries. And uh, went down to Mexico. Man, I just had bullhorns hiring guys going around saying, bring in blinded eyes, bring in the crippled, bring in all this, bring in the dead corpse didn't enter my mind whatsoever i just thought it's in the bible i didn't think nobody's going nobody's going to bring somebody dead to church <laughs> they only do that in the united states they bring dead christians in <laughs> they're harder to raise than the the corpse and brought a person in that was dead i'll never forget it as long as i live i'm telling you the truth i started shaking I thought, dear God, I don't believe this. I don't believe. They're just going, they're going to ruin my reputation, ruin this service. It's all over. It's all over. I prayed for her, and she rose from the dead. But I'll tell you what, years prior to that, I'd pray for people. We'd have a healing service. Nobody get healed. Nobody get healed. And I was just scared to no end. Just, I thought, God, I can't do this. It's wonderful when God told me, he said, I know you can't. <laughs> he said, it's my power. 
It's not yours. I just need your hands that I can work through. I need your voice. And, and, and so that just leaves me off the hook. I can't heal a mosquito with a headache. But I know a man who can. And he just needs somebody. Is there somebody that will act like his word is truth? Talk like his word is truth. Let him use your mouth. Let him use your hands. He's waiting for you just to be available. And the rest is up to him. And the devil will come up when you first start trying. You know, the devil will come up and say, yeah, see, I told you they wouldn't get healed. How do you know they didn't get healed? A deposit was placed in there. Don't you ever pull back on your force of faith. It's just like I think Ellen said last night that we've right here in this church service, a miracle service that uh, prayed for a, 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 was a lady, totally blind. Didn't want any better. Wow. I don't believe that. The Bible says, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Now, I'm kind. I'm not going to say, why, oh, you're a liar. No, I didn't say that. But inside, I said, nah, she's healed. The Bible says so. When the service was over, stood all the way out there, and it was Bob. Wasn't it you, Bob, that, that, that you seen her? And she, then she started reading the signs up here. Healed by the power of God. When you place the deposit of God's word into people's lives that God's word won't return void unless you pull it out. Don't you pull it out with your doubt and unbelief or exalting your sensibilities, your intellect above the word of God. We're not smarter than God. Amen. Amen. What a good God we serve. Amen. Be kind. And just tell people, I really like that. I really, and on the inside, in Jesus' name, that's a requirement for me. In Jesus' name, I demand you give that to me. And if they miss out, then go to somebody else. Keep practicing. Just keep practicing. Because there's somebody out there that's just waiting for you to come. There's somebody. And... Practice makes perfect. Amen. I can just tell you so many stories. That's how Dr. Fred Price bought Pepperdine University. Bought Pepperdine University. Bought a whole university. Had a little old church. And he says, you know, I'm tired of the little church. I want to buy that whole university. Well, you have not because you ask not. That, um, how many, you've heard of uh, uh, Pat Robertson. Pat Robertson. He owns... What, what's his network? Uh, what, what's that called? Uh, CBN? Read how that, that came to pass. He lived in a, a beat-up little old apartment. Every, he had an old beat-up station wagon. All that he owned you could put in that station wagon. And he went and, and talked to those people and says, I'd like to have this station. I'd like to have this. This is nice. I'd like to have it. And they gave it to him. Read the story. He says, you know, and other, he, he says, I'm going to show you how you can get a, a tax write-off and you'll be better off than you was. And they looked at that and they said, wow. I mean, it didn't happen immediately, but they gave it to him. Now, how many wishes you would have done that? You have not because you ask not. Amen. Isn't God a good God? God takes the foolish things of this world to confound those which be wise. Takes the foolish things. Amen. Well, let me just minister to some people. We'll pray for everybody. But uh, I think you, yeah, this is the brother, you, and you told me, I can't remember what you said because I had too many things going on in my mind, but you told me your friend really needs a miracle, so don't tell me what it is, okay? And uh, so is it all right if I pray for you? Okay. Well, you can just sit there. You can just sit there that uh, Jesus is in the serving business. You don't have to come. He'll just he'll come to you. Well, he wants us to come to him too, but um, let, let me just look in the realm of the Spirit. Well, here's what I see. I see a spirit that looks like he, uh, th this spirit 
Uh, I'll tell you what he sort of looks like. He sort of looks like, you ever see that cartoon, Casper the Friendly Ghost? But he's, but he's, not, but he's a dark image. And that's sort of what he looks like, but he's more vicious. But kind of, you know, sort of looks like that. On the right hand, uh, uh, no, the left hand side of your, your body, the heart region, and just goes in, in through the lungs and down into the, all the way to the, like the kidney area, that whole portion of the left hand side, not the whole portion, but quite a bit of it. He looks like a, you know, a little spirit like that. Have you been to the doctor? Uh, <coughs> excuse me, my, my voice is kind of gone. I've had a heart surgery. During the heart surgery, I had a stroke. You had heart surgery? Yes, and they told me. And a stroke. And a stroke. They told me that the adrenal glands were dead and not producing the cortisol. And my brother prayed for me up here. Okay. So uh, I, I could not squat down and get up, but I did. Wow. So you're already <laughs> getting so, the good. So he prayed for me, yes. Okay. Well, this will just be more of a confirmation because uh, I don't even remember if your friend, if you did tell me, I can't remember, but I, I know what I've seen. And, and you said it's in, the, in your heart region. Yes. And, and what about, it looks like it goes, affects like your lungs too. Um, Especially that, that lung on the left-hand side. Do you have any aggravation there, this por portion of your body? Not, not noticeable. Not noticeable? But how long ago was it that you had that heart surgery? Um, a year and a week ago. Okay. Well, let's just do some more surgery. Amen. Everybody, what's your name? Bill. Bill. Where are you from, Bill? Tennessee. West Tennessee. Ten West Tennessee. Okay. Everybody stretch forth your hand towards Bill. In Jesus' matchless name, we take authority over that spirit. Leave Bill. You can't stay. You can't stay. In Jesus' name. Leave planet Earth now in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, I command that heart region, that right-hand side of the body in the heart region, I command that whole area, the left-hand side, I'm sorry, I command that whole area to relax. Understanding that relaxing is surrendering, yielding to God's unconditional love, which is God's power. Do it more, Bill. Do it more. Do it more. Just relax more. Relaxing is accepting, surrendering to God's miracle power in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, now, Bill, here's what I want you to do. I want you just to do something that was difficult for you to do before. Maybe you, you said you had heart surgery. Was it difficult for, if you ran? Was, when's the last time did you run that you ran? Uh, it's been more than a year. More than a year? Now, Bill, I'm not going to push you on a level that you're not at, but I want to come to your level. And I want to encourage you, though, to the best of your ability to do what you couldn't do before and maybe do something that was just not easy to do before. What about running? When, you want to you want to run? try it. Okay. Oh, don't, don't try it. To try is to fail. Do it. Just do it. To the best of your ability. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, Bill, how much better do you feel now? I feel a lot better. Feel a lot better. God's a good God. Amen. And I believe you got a new heart. When God does something, he don't do things halfway. I believe you got a new heart. Amen. 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 And, and Bill, thank God for doctors. Thank God for doctors. Boy, a lot of Christians would be dead if it wasn't for doctors. However, when doctors have information that disagrees with God, then we have to shift gears. It's time to go from first gear. Just skip second and go to third. Amen. Well, it, it's God that does that. 
but here's what I want to say. <clears throat> if you go back to the doctor and the doctor says, has reports that are contrary to the word of God, believe God's word. Now, if you need medicine, take it. Yes. If you don't need it, need it, then don't take it. That's simple. Simple. Amen. But uh, regardless of what medical science says, that um, if doctors say one thing, God says something else, I believe God. Amen. There was a little girl, and I've told this story before, and I, but a lot of you haven't heard it. And this is several years ago. There's a little girl, baby girl, and there was a portion of her brain that she was missing, and the doctor said it's impossible to live without that portion of your brain. So we prayed for her. In fact, we just sent a prayer clock because she's so many miles away. It's like 300 miles away. And the next day, the doctor said she'd be dead, but she wasn't. And she continued to live. And I, I can talk about this for an hour, but basically she continued to live. Last we heard, she was like in her 30s, and she, was, she acted like she had a brain. But the doctors said she still don't have it, that portion of the brain. It's still, but she is just as intelligent as anybody with a brain. There's no uh, difficulties whatsoever. And so, medically speaking, she has no brain. God says she has a brain. So we believe God. But I can tell you a story that's even more powerful than that. In the United States of America, our White House is full of people that have brains, but they act like they don't have one. <laughs> All the politicians. We need, we, we need, well, let's just go on. <laughs> Pray for those in place of authority. Amen. Believe God's word. Believe God's word. Just keep believing God's word. God, Romans chapter 4, God calls those things that be not, even as though they were. Amen. Amen. Fando ronde de carean sin die de carean. This uh, gentleman right here, I, I remember shaking hands with you, but I don't know if you told me your name. Where are you all from? Bloomington, Indiana. It is so obvious there is a, a new beginning in your life. And you're, this, this, is this your girlfriend? My wife. Oh. <laughs> there is a new beginning that's in your spirit. And you've got a hold of it. And you're not going to let go. Amen. And God's going to, he's going to confirm it. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to take some steps. Yes. <laughs> you take those steps. And you're going to see it. You're going to be amazed. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. Amen. Amen. What a good God we serve. Well, let me just uh, ask if there's... Well, well, we'll do this first. Is there anybody here this morning? And if you're not positive that you'd go to heaven if you died right now, I want you to just come stand right here and we're going to pray the most powerful prayer in existence. If you're not positive you'd go to heaven if you were to die right now, then just come up here. Okay? Now, if you're positive you're going to heaven, you raise your hand, and I'm going to look around. Now, you look to your right and your left, and if you see somebody, if their hand isn't up, tell them, say, I, I'll, I'll go up there with you. Okay. Did you raise your hand, Rich? You did? Okay. Okay. Amen. Well, isn't God a good God? Um, I, I see this little, uh, th this young lady in, in the, in, is that in a wheelchair? Yeah. Pardon me? A stroller. A stroller? Okay. Is a, 
Is it all right if I, is she your daughter, I assume? She is, yes. Is it be all right if I pray for her? Please, yeah. Uh, what, what's your name? She's not verbal. She's not verbal? Okay. She doesn't speak. How long, what, what, what's her name? Abby. Abby. She understands? I, we're not sure. We don't know how much she okay. understands. Abby? Abby? See, she understands it. Can I pray for you, Abby? Jesus loves you, Abby. Th these the rest of your children here? I have six, but yes. Pardon me? I have six kids. Oh, you have six kids. Are my youngest. She's your youngest? He's my youngest. He's your youngest. She's baby number four. Baby number four. Okay. Abby, Jesus loves you. Okay? That's okay. That's okay. Abby, we're going to pray for you so that you can have all the desires of your heart. Is that okay? Yeah. That's okay. You can hold her if you want. Just kind of put your arm around her. She probably needs that. Amen. Just give her a little encouragement that mama's here and everything's okay. Amen. Just let her know. Okay. It's okay, Abby. Can I shake your hand? Can I shake? Yeah. Thank you. Abby, can, can, Abby can, can you give me a hug? Can you give me a hug? Can you give me a hug? Oh, thank you, Abby. Amen. I'm going to pray for you so that you can have all of God's blessings in your heart. Were you here last night? No, okay. I wasn't. Well, keep this in mind. No matter who it is on earth, if they were born handicapped, their spirit is not handicapped. I agree. So their spirit fully understands when we speak spiritual things, and there's nothing any more spiritual than God's word. So you just keep talking to her and treating her from a scriptural standpoint like she's normal. Okay. God sees her normal. And what will take place when her spirit gets strong, it will force her body to be what she is on the inside, normal. Okay? Okay, okay Abby, we're going to pray for you. Everybody stretch forth your hand towards Abby. In Jesus' name, we take authority over any kind of a force that would come against Abby that would hinder Abby from being just as normal in the physical world as she wants to be and as she should be for a girl her age. We take authority over all those forces. Leave her now in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, we command Abby's mind be filled with the love of God, the power of God, and all of Abby's body filled with the power of God, the love of God in Jesus' name, to do things just as normal as any other girl her age. In Jesus' name, I command all of her brain cells to be recreated in Jesus' matchless name to be created to be as normal as any other girl her age in Jesus' name. How old is Abby? She's 16. Uh, when was the last time can she, could she walk before? She started walking when she was four. Okay, so she She's, walks okay now? Well, her left foot goes in. Okay. At, at, from her hip. Why don't her you knee. get her get her out of there and just let her walk around? Okay. okay. Do you, do you need help to, or do you need, want some ushers to help you? Okay, Abby. Why don't you go with her, Abby? You go with your mom. Just run over to those doors r real fast. Run over there. You can do it, Abby. <laughs> Come 
where, where are, do you all live? Oh, in St. Louis? Okay. You okay, Abby? Everything okay? Yes, it's okay. Continually just to get her to do things that she couldn't do before. Okay, we'll talk to her. Talk to her now. What's your name? Tell me your name. You can do it. Tell me what your name is, Abby. Say Abby. Amen. Have confidence in God's word. Amen. Have confidence in God's word. Amen. You know, uh, Ted and I, are, he's our TV producer. Where, you back there, Ted? He's, still, he's telling all these people what to do. He's back there. We were in uh, St. Lucia, and there was a lady that uh, was mentally handicapped, I don't know, I guess all her life. I, don't, I, I can't really remember. But she couldn't speak. Her body was all twisted up, and, and there, wasn't any, there wasn't anything different when we prayed for her. But don't be moved what you see or what you feel, but instead be moved by the word of God that's real. And so I just prayed for her, and I went on, and probably 45 minutes later, praying for other people she gets out of the wheelchair and walks on her own and starts talking she didn't talk good at first she really didn't she just but she, i mean if you never talked before but the pastor emailed me about a month later from saint lucia and i think did, did you get the email and now she drives a car she has a job amen Keep this in mind. And I don't understand. God's smarter than me. Did you ever notice God's smarter than you? <laughs> but as you study the Bible, there's gifts of healings, and then there's working of miracles. A miracle is an instant manifestation. Healing is a process. You release the anointing, and the rest is up to God. The Bible says that God will confirm his word with signs following. Your job is to speak the word, believe the word. His job is the confirmation. You can't conform. You can't confirm it. It's, and he says, these signs shall follow them that believe. They lay hands on the sick and they will recover. God does the recovering business. You do the hands. Don't confuse the two. You do your job. God does her does his so um, wh what's your name Sheila how much better would you say Sheila uh, that uh, Abby is now well I'm going by faith I'm not okay well here's what you do Sheila you just keep on expecting expecting Jesus said Matthew 7 7 seek and you'll find don't look for the negative Look for what God is doing. If you seek for the worse, it'll come. Right. But seek for the better. Just, see, just, just, just keep on seeking for better and better improvements. I will. Amen. Thank you. It wasn't too long ago that there, there was a, uh, a young boy. I guess he's about 12 years of age. And he was brought here over in this area. And he was autistic, born that way. We prayed for him. Didn't seem to be any better. And he, there was just not too many things he could do. But now he gets on a four-wheeler and rides it on his own and does all sorts of things. So he's improving. And uh, so just have confidence. Have confidence in God. Amen. Anybody else, if you need prayer in any fashion, that uh, if you want to just come and just form a line here, I'll be glad to pray for or everybody that wants prayer.
I can see that determination. You're not going to walk away from here unless you get what you need, what you want. And you will. Amen. 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 Tabitha, I remembered your name. Yeah, first time. That's a miracle. At least I didn't call you Roger. I just walked by you, and, and I seen that key again, and I heard these words. I heard Jesus say, I give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Remember that? No, don't call me ma'am. <laughs> that's all I understand. Wow, that's what it is. And, this is the, and, and now you've got the keys. He gives you a huge key. And what do you do with the key? You, you just don't look at it. You've got to use it. Mm -hmm. And use it. Have not because you ask not. Amen. That's one of the major keys of the kingdom is asking. Amen. Well, let me, I'm going to pray for all of you at one time. Release, I'm going to release God's power just, just like God did because God said we can. We can use his word. And um, then I'm going to lay hands on each person. I promise you I will not take my hands off of you until I know that God's power has gone into you. Now, I'm going to tell you a, a, another little secret. And, and I, I'm, to the best of my ability, I'm going to try to give you this information as much humility and truth as I can. I'm not any different than you. And so... If you were to pray for me, I can receive from you if I'll do this. If I will realize that you are 10,000 times bigger on the inside of you if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're filled with the Spirit of God, then God lives in you. Then you're just, you're a vessel. You're like a glove that the Holy Spirit fits inside. And that's what I am. I'm a glove of God. And so God's inside of me. And so when I, when I lay hands on you, close your eyes. Don't think of Mel Bond laying hands on you, but think of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that I want you to receive. I want you to receive. I don't want you, I don't want you to have Mel Bond's anointing. Man, that, that ain't going to work. That's no good. That'll make you put your boots on the wrong feet. Which you want, you want, you deserve the anointing of Jesus. Okay, so let me pray. Close your eyes. Dear God, in Jesus' name, I take authority over the forces of darkness that come against these people. These are your people. Jesus died on the cross for them personally. Such love. And so in Jesus' name, I take authority over any kind of problem that would come against their lives, their bodies. You have to leave in the matchless name of Jesus. You have to leave right now. We command you in Jesus' name. And we command that area in their body or their life that needs a miracle. We command that, that area to relax. Understanding that relaxing is surrendering, yielding to the unconditional love of God, which is the power of God in Jesus' matchless name. Now I'm going to lay hands on you. I won't take my hands off of you <coughs> until I know. And sometimes I won't even get to touch you and I can already feel that it's going into your body. Then you do something that was difficult or that you couldn't do before because actions activates God's power. There it is. See, I haven't even touched you. There it is. It's, it's all over you. That's God's anointing. That's his love for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In the wonderful name of Jesus. 
What are you doing? In the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Here you go. There it is. Whoa. All over you. I'm not even touching you. And you're just soaking up God's presence and his anointing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Just rest. God isn't holding, and he never has held anything away from you. Amen. He doesn't withhold. He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder, not a withholder. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to do a couple more things. I promise you, we'll dismiss you before midnight. <laughs> Remember how I talked about how that the God said that he would give us that anointing? And it started with them dancing. He said, they just spin around. And it's a dance. It's a da and so there's power in dancing. There's just power. And so Judy Jacobs wrote a song about um, the rain dance and got it from the old traditional American Indians that would dance for rain. It's a sacrifice. Dancing is a sacrifice that I can remember the first time I danced in church. I thought, dear God, I'm going to make a fool out of myself. But when I started doing it, it felt like this big, gigantic buzzard was on my back, just lifted, and I was free. And spirits leave when you dance. They leave. And so we're, gonna, we're just going to dance a, a dance of, it's an old Indian rain dance. And if you want to dance it Indian style, it doesn't make any difference. Just dance before the Lord. And uh, the old Indian... Uh, rain dance is, b is basically like a round dance. And the round dance is a dance of victory. It's, and so the women, if they were going, if you want to do it Indian style, that's okay. But uh, among the Indians, they just want you to dance. And so I've been up on the reservation many times where that, man, I see some of these people that they're not doing the traditional dance. They're just dancing in the Holy Ghost. And, uh, and so, but the traditional dance is the women with the beat. They kind of flat-footed like this, you know. You know, and I think that's kind of boring, but, you know. <laughs> and I've seen I Indian women up there, my goodness, they say, I ain't buying that. They do the fancy dance, and which is, but the men, they just do on their tiptoes like this. And so, would it just dance, there's power. And listen to the words of Judy Jacobs. And so, and then after we've done that, that if, if, uh, if you want to, if you want to be ministered to further, 
just just stand and somebody will come to you people in the church here knows how to release the anointing of god for miracles it's incredible that i mean and and so there'll be somebody that'll come to you and and operate with the gifts of the spirit supernaturally touch your life and if you want to be minister if you want to minister to somebody take your liberty in the holy ghost that all the gifts ought to be in operation in every single service okay dorsey crank it up and you all can follow don and i